praise the Lord. I've said this before, but I just really love you folks. And you know, my, my wife and I came here in April of 2012. And one of the reasons we came back was the love, the reception that we received from a, a beautiful young lady at the front door. All of you know Tina. And that love was not only expressed from her heart, but from others. And, you know, that, that kind of reception uh, will always be positive to those that you reach out to receive. Now, I was told a while ago that I was a little overdressed today uh, for Inglewood. I, I should be in jeans and an Argyle sweater, Brother Andy. Uh, But this is the way we pastored and preached on Sunday morning, so I thought, well, one more time wouldn't hurt. And, when, you know, when you get my age, you know, you have to dress it up as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I'm blessed today. All my immediate family are here. My son uh, and his wife came from St. Louis. Our daughter and son-in-law live here and their kids and... Uh, also have our foster daughter and her son, uh, Jerry Elliott and John. I think you know them. And we're just blessed. You know, it's awesome to be around family, isn't it? Uh, maybe sometimes you have your differences and uh, sometimes there's politics that are spoken of that they shouldn't talk about. Uh, that happened, but anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding, son. Um, <laughs> How many of you like leftovers? You like leftovers? My son-in-law is king of leftovers. He's shaking his head yes and his wife. Uh, we, we lived with him for about 11 months when we first came to this area. Uh, we had retired from pastoring because of physical problems with diabetes. And um, uh, I learned quite quickly that uh, he liked leftovers. We, we used to say around the house, Chris will eat anything. Uh, kind of like Mikey, but anyway, you remember the what a life commercial, you know? I'll eat most things as long as it doesn't smell bad or have anything growing on it, you know? If it's food that I like. There are those things I don't like. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about leftovers. I, I, I don't know if you realize how important leftovers are. I, I read about one guy, he said, Mom fed us leftovers for 30 years, and we don't, nobody still doesn't know where the original meal came from. We're in Matthew this morning. If you have a Bible, electronic Bible, turn with us this morning, Matthew uh, chapter 15. I'm going to begin reading in verse 32. It says that Jesus called to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with you three days. That's kind of like some of our company, right? <laughs> I have compassion on you. Anyway, <laughs> they have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry or they may collapse on the way. Wouldn't want our relatives to collapse on the way home. Got to feed them. And his disciples answered, where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fishes. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground, and then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they turned to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. How many ate this week and were satisfied? I was, I was more than satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. 
The number of those who ate were about 4,000 besides women and children. Would you bow with me this morning? God, we're so grateful for your love. Thank you for your word that speaks to our hearts. Volumes, Lord God, giving us direction in our life and sharing with us the beauty and of your grace, your mercy, and your love. We ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds this morning, that we might be receptive, Lord God, and that we might partake of the bread of life abundantly this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to focus this morning on Verse 37, of course, where it says they had leftovers. Seven basketfuls of leftovers. Now, this passage is a little different from the feeding of the 5,000. They had 12 basketfuls. But I want to focus not so much on that number, but the kind of baskets. The baskets, it seems, in the feeding of the 5,000 were like a picnic basket. One, one person could carry it. We see that from the word... Kofius, which is the Greek word, and the baskets for the feeding of the 4,000 was actually a larger basket. Uh, if you remember in Acts 9.25, Paul was let down in a basket. That is the same Greek word, uh, spurious, that is used to describe this basket that they picked up the seven basketfuls, and I thought, well, Seven and 12, you know, you would think the 12 would be larger, but actually the seven were the larger baskets. So there were probably more leftovers here than there were in the feeding of the 5,000. And what I want to focus in on this morning is not that Jesus made too much, but rather he made an abundance. An abundance. Do you know what abundant blessings are? Our God is an abundant supplier. He abundantly blesses his children. And he does it because he loves us. He cares about us. There was an abundance. We, we see in the word over and over this, this word uh, abounding or abundance referring to what God does for his children, for his people. We are his children. God blesses us in so many ways. They ate and were satisfied. How many of you would like to have had bread and dried fish for Thanksgiving? That's basically what they had, bread and dried fish. Now, I don't know about, I know Pastor Al would agree with me. I like my fish fried <laughs> and hush puppies. And I'm, I'm from North Carolina. We have coleslaw. I'm sure we do here too. And that's what we would like to eat. Of course, that's not the diet of that day. And so for Thanksgiving, they got bread and dried fish. Jesus gave thanks and they did eat. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, within us. That power of the Holy Spirit through faith brings an abundance from Almighty God. God wants to abundantly bless you. Now, I realize there's been a lot of water that went under the bridge this year that we wish hadn't gone under the bridge. You know, we've had problems. There's been uh, sickness in our own families. There's been health issues that we faced. There's been other problems that we faced personally. There's been problems locally with governments. Our police are being shot and they're shooting people they shouldn't shoot. There's a lot of things going on all around us. Had someone come up this morning and you know pray for my daughter. She's 11 years old and doesn't understand what's going on in this world. And our children, you know, they're being influenced because they see what we see. They hear what we hear. They've got social media, and it's, it's all out there. But we serve a God that loves us, church. We serve a God that wants to take care of us. I skipped a page. I better 
or sticking together. Excuse me a second. I still use the old notes. I, I got different glasses. I have trouble seeing the electronic devices anyway. I'll get loose here in a minute. <clears throat> you know, our God's a powerful God. Amen? He created this world. He created you, and he can take care of you. In Exodus chapter 34, it writes, it reads this way, and he, speaking of God, passed in front of Moses, proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. You know, when we think about abundant blessings, a lot of times we just focus in on those material things that we get from God. You know, money in our pocket, a roof over our head, and all these are wonderful blessings. But here God is speaking to Moses, and he said that he abounds in love and faithfulness. And I want to focus on those two aspects. God's love. We all know the scripture, God so loved the world, he gave us his son. He abounds toward us abundantly with grace that we might have full hope of eternal life. That's an awesome blessing, amen? amen. You're still here. You, you didn't make too many trips to the pan, did you? I don't want you to fall asleep on me. I was sharing about a pastor got a phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning. Lady says, can you pay for or preach a little bit, Pastor? I'm having trouble falling asleep. <laughs> so I don't want you to fall asleep this morning. God abundantly loves us. We are the world. God so loved the world. We're the world. We're his children. We're his sons and his daughters. Right. Pastor Brandon, I think, talked about it last week. Our God is a God that personally is concerned about us because he loves us. He wants to take care of us, so he sent his son to die for us. That's how much he loves us. His love is immeasurable. It is an abundant love. Yes, praise God, he provides for us physically, materially. He protects us. He pours out rich blessings because we are his children. And when we see all these things happening around us, we have to be reminded that our God is for us and not against us. These things are to unfold because we are in the end times. And as we see those things unfolding, rather than being depressed about them and agonizing on what is going on, we should be focusing on our Savior that is soon to come and redeem us from this old ungodly world. God loves you. Sometimes, you know, we, we get bound up in these things, in the cares of this world that we lose sight. We get kind of uh, sidetracked. We get to looking at them rather than focusing on our Savior. When I was in the second grade, I uh, had a little pencil about like this, and teacher says, oh, you can sharpen it one more time. So I went to the window where the pencil sharpener was, and I saw something outside. I just sat in there sharpening away. You know what I did? I sharpened my thumb. <laughs> I'm serious. I was distracted by that rather than focusing on what I was doing and after I came back from the nurse getting it bandaged up, I got two licks with a paddle because I had done something dumb. <laughs> I didn't understand it either, but anyway, back then that's what they did, you know. <laughs> Psalms 37 verse 25 <clears throat> says, I was young, now I am old. True statement. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Hallelujah. God supplies every need that we have. 
I'm sure you had plenty to eat over Thanksgiving, didn't you? Hallelujah. I did too. Ate too much like everybody else. Family's important. We like to gather around and stuff our faces. I did it twice. We had Thanksgiving, and then we had Thanksgiving again yesterday. My son was here and his family, so we had to do it all over again. Well, we didn't have to, but boy, we sure enjoyed it. I think it tasted better the second time because some of it was leftovers. Oh, wow. So we enjoyed time together. My hope is in Jesus. I trust your hope is in Jesus today to take care of you. How many of you have a roof over your heads? Hallelujah. I'm not homeless. I'm not homeless. My God has provided for me and my family. My wife and I and our kids have been so blessed by God. I mean, not, not great big. I mean, he didn't give me a yacht or a Cadillac. I don't need them anyway. But all that I had need of was provided for me. Hallelujah. God does love us that much that he is willing to provide all that we have need. The scripture tells us our God is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Not just a little, not just enough, but abundantly he provides. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us our cup overrunneth, and it does. Hallelujah. My cup overrunneth. Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we came here to my, my daughter and son-in-law live in Raytown with her two girls, we had a Ford Escape and a bunch of stuff that we put in our foster daughter's garage. That was our household stuff. We didn't have anything else. My wife was on Social Security. I was getting 40% disability from Uncle Sam, and I put in for Social Security disability, and within five months, I had it. Hallelujah. Later, I applied for uh, an increase in disability, and it went up to 60%. We had been to California, and we were on our way back. We were in a motel in Denver, Colorado. And my wife elbowed me. I was asleep. Woke me out of a sound sleep, and she was checking our account on the, her phone. And she says, we got more zeros than we should have. <laughs> Hallelujah. They increased my benefits to 100%. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bought a, we were able to buy a home, and that, that was a miracle. I mean, God really blessed. And we upgraded, uh, we had a, pop-up camper, and we upgraded and got us a, a trailer and got us another vehicle later on because the other little guy wouldn't pour, pull it. But I'm saying all this to say this, you know, God pours out his blessing. If we have faith, if we will walk in obedience unto the Lord as we love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and body, our God will take care of us. I don't know what tomorrow holds, Next year may be the greatest year of all. Jesus may come before we make it. He may come next year, but we need to hold on to the Savior. Everything else in this life is unimportant. Jesus said it, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all that you have need will be added unto you. And we need to hold on to him because we really don't know what the future holds here on this earth but we know what the future holds over yonder. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We need to get our mind, our heart. The scripture tells us to focus on things above, not on things of this earth. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7, verse 9 through 11. I went the wrong direction, excuse me. He says, which of you... If his son asks for bread, and will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? If you then thought, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, 
how much more will your Father in heaven give you good gifts? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to give you good gifts. Pastor Brandon talked about this, I think, last week, about how our God wants to give us good things. All good things come from the Father above. Hallelujah. In this same passage, he talks about asking, about seeking, about knocking. If we ask, we'll receive. If we knock, it'll be open. If we seek, we'll find. In faith, believing, we shall receive in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. We serve an abundant God. Again, Exodus 34, verse 6, says, Abounding in love and faithfulness. That's our God. Our God is faithful, church. He is faithful. Amen. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You know, we can't be like a, a flag that blows in the wind. You know, we, we can't blow here and there. We need to stay straight. Follow the straight and narrow that leads to the Savior, to our Almighty God. And we will receive blessings from the Father, for He keeps His promises. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of going with Pastor Brandon. I liked his message last week. He talked about, you know, our Father, our God. His word is yea and amen. What He said He'll do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I promised a lot of things to God over the years, and I'll be honest, I've failed in many of them. I make promises to human beings, and I don't always keep them like I should. Sometimes I have my good excuses, but, you know, good excuses, good intentions don't get a lot of things accomplished. They don't get a lot of things accomplished in our relationship with the Lord. But he never fails. He will never fail us. He'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. Hallelujah. Jesus told the crowd, hey, you guys sit down. And I can just see the crowd. They're packing their bags. They're getting ready to leave. They've been there three days. We need to go home and get something to eat. Maybe he heard their stomach growling. I don't know. But he said, these people need to be fed. And that's what he did. He was faithful to take care of that need at that moment. And there were leftovers because he abundantly supplied their need. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He satisfies our hunger, and it's not just about food, is it? We have a hunger. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. That's what he said, and that's what he'll do because he promised it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you have been dead in sin? Are you alive now? Glory to God. <laughs> we have abundant life in Jesus Christ because he is faithful. He keeps his promises. My brother died in April of 2014. We went back to the funeral. I had his, well, memorial service. And I was blessed. I had my whole family just about before me. And I was able to share with them my testimony of being saved from drugs and alcohol abuse through the ministry of Teen Challenge. And that was an awesome thing to share with them the abundant blessings my God has been in my life, what he's done for me. I can't imagine living life today without Jesus. I may well have ended up, you know, on skid row and homeless. I wouldn't have had the family that I have today. You look back at your past. I know we need to focus on the future, but we look back to look forward. Look what God has done, knowing what he will do because he's on the throne of grace and love and mercy. He cares about your every moment, your every day, everything you have need of. Hallelujah. Physically and spiritually, he wants to bless you. How many have been healed? 
by faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God. After I got saved, I, I was saved through the ministry of Denver Teen Challenge, and we would travel to various churches in Denver and Utah, and uh, I had the privilege on several occasions to go and share my testimony. And at one of these occasions, I, my wife would probably, I think it was Woodland Pass or something like that. I'm looking for a nod from my wife. Anyway, whatever church it was, we, we, we weren't even together then. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, <laughs> I like to tell stories, to be honest with you. But at any rate, I had a flashback from LSD, and I had a horrible headache, and I, I didn't know what to do. I even went outside for a little while. I came back in, and uh, our Teen Challenge director wanted to know what was wrong, and I told him. They took me up front, and they prayed for me. And you know, God immediately, and I, that doesn't always happen, but immediately he touched me in body, set me free from that. That's an awesome thing when you feel the touch of the Almighty in a way that you can't explain with words. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He will be faithful. We know by his stripes we are healed. Now, why we are not always healed, I can't explain all that to you. Sometimes we have to walk through the valleys rather than be conquerors on the mountaintops. We don't always understand why or what for, but our God's still on the throne. He loves you. Again, he's your heavenly father. We're his children. You don't want your children to be sick, do you? Your sons, your daughters, your spouses, you want them to be healthy. We're God's children and he takes care of us. He doesn't want us to be sick. But we live in this world. Don't we? We have illnesses, we have coughs, we have colds. How many have had of that this winter or this fall? It's not winter yet. I've been there and still struggling a little with it. That happens in life. But God will heal. I know because I've experienced it. Have faith to receive. God will be faithful in the future tomorrow. He's been faithful today, and he'll be faithful right now. I don't know where you're at in your life, what's going on right now, but God will be faithful. If you will allow him to do so through the power of the Spirit working in you to have faith and believe and receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 talks about the soon coming rapture of the church. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, he says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. He will keep you if you allow him to do so. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither height nor depth nor principalities or powers, things present or things in the past. What separates us from the love of God is me, myself, and I. It's when I go astray and I don't follow the love of the Lord and the faithfulness of God in my life and receive his blessings that he has for me. Keep my eyes on the Savior. Hallelujah. He will keep us spirit, soul, and body for that day when the Lord comes back. And he is coming soon. I believe it with all my heart. We need to tap into his blessings today. Receive what he has for you. I don't know where you're standing right now in your relationship with the Lord. Maybe you feel hungry this morning. Not for turkey and dressing, but for his love. Maybe you haven't experienced these blessings in your life. You want to receive the abundance God has for you. Open up your heart. It's not hard to do. 
I was on the streets of Denver, Colorado when a young lady walked up and I was looking for Purple Haze LSD and this young lady handed me a purple track with LSD written on it. It's like God slapped me upside the head and got my attention. And she kept telling me all I had to do was ask to receive. I knew Jesus at one time. I was the president of our Methodist Youth Fellowship when I was growing up. I would go to the next city that was had booze and I would get, I'd drink on Sundays, chew a bunch of gum and then go to church and lead the MYF, biggest hypocrite on the earth at the time. But my God, he kept reaching out for me to draw me back unto him. When I was in Nam, I'd get letters from mom, you know, love and prayers and praying for you. And I knew she was. She continued to pray for my soul that there would be that day that I would turn around from my lifestyle that I was living and allow him to enter my heart and life. Our God's an abundant God. His leftovers don't, they far exceed our main course in life when we try to live our lives without him. I know I've been there and he's brought me back from the precious, from the falling into eternity without him. Hallelujah. He raised me from the dead and gave me new life. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this morning? I was thinking of the children of Israel. They were in the desert, no water, no food. What did God do? He provided water. He provided manna. He provided quail. Now, they couldn't eat leftovers, could they, Pastor Andy? When the manna came, they were just supposed to get what was before them for that day, unless it was the weekend of the Sabbath, and then they were able to get more. But generally, if they got more, you know what happened? <laughs> It spoiled before they could eat it. They couldn't eat the leftovers. But we're living in grace, church. We can partake of the leftovers because they're in abundance for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads this morning. Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much for your love that you gave your son for us. This morning, I pray for that one or more that's here this morning that needs to invite you into their heart and their life. If you're here this morning and you haven't received of the abundance of salvation through Jesus Christ, would you raise your hand? We just want to pray for you this morning. Anyone this morning? Oh, hallelujah. There are several hands up. Anyone else? Amen. Let's pray with them this morning. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your son. We thank you for your love this morning. We come to you and ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive us of our sins, our wayward lives. Thank, thank you for your love this morning. We ask Jesus to come into our heart and our life. We receive his blessing this morning, his abundant love, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you can go further. There's more out there than we can imagine. More than we can think or imagine is available to us. We can tap into the blessings of God. There's a commercial. It talks about if somebody offered you more, wouldn't you take it? You know, if you, if you ask your children, would you like another gift at Christmas? Would they say no? <laughs> you would, they would take it. If somebody came up to you and said, Andy, I want to give you $10,000, would you say no? <laughs> Probably not. Of course, he would want to know if there was any strings attached. <laughs> God's love is awesome this morning. Let him bless you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. 
thank you so much for your reception this morning and just pray that you'll continue to grow in the, the abounding blessings of God that far exceed anything that we can imagine. Hallelujah.